Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants and this is my indoor nursery. Today, I'm going to teach you how to grow Pingwicula gigantea, a rather easy to grow Pingwicula species that I frankly think everyone should be growing because of how big and beautiful it is. These are some small little babies that are about a month old, but you can already imagine how big they get if this is how big they are then. Please check out the description to find uh, timestamps where you can jump around to the individual sections of this video as you need, as well as a link to my nursery where you can buy one of these plants from me directly. I also have a Discord where you can hop in, ask me all kinds of questions, and, you know, show off your plants. I like seeing them. And even ask questions from other growers that are around. It's a pretty cool place. Hope to see you in there. Please like and subscribe. And I hope you have any questions, well, any questions you may have, you put them in the, uh, the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. The first and most important point to cultivating any carnivorous plant is climate. You need to provide a stable climate for long-term success. This includes temperature, humidity, and airflow. To maintain a stable climate of 40 to 80% humidity, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and steady airflow, I suggest the following. Use a humidifier near your grow area to maintain humidity. Bags, clear plastic cups, and humidity domes work, but these options are a poor replacement for ambient humidity. Bags and plastic cups in particular can amplify the sun and roast plants with high sun exposure if grown on a windowsill. Use a space heater or air conditioner to keep your temperature between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Going too far out of this temperature range can cause stress to the immune systems of the plants and lead to more fungal and pest infections. To measure your grow area's climate, I highly recommend purchasing a thermometer or humidity gauge like this one. There's a link in the description to buy one from Amazon. The next important point to cultivating carnivorous plants is lighting. The sun is the best light you can have for your plants. Since most homes do not have windowsills that provide enough light, indoor growers are left to using indoor LED grow lights. Here you can see that I use an array of different fixtures. No matter what kind of lights you use, make sure to drape the cords before going to your outlet to prevent water-related electrical fires. An appropriately rated timer for your lights is critical to the long-term health of your plants. As a quick overview, lighting sources should be 4 to 6 inches away from most species of carnivorous plants. I recommend Yescom 225 lights as they cost around $30 off Amazon and work great for smaller collections. You can use 4-foot LED shop lights from most big box stores as well. I have a link in the description to the red-blue suncoat lights that I use for some of my racks. Make sure that you provide at least 12 hours of direct light to your plants a day. Going under this amount can stress certain tropical plants. Like climate shifts, this can lead to decreased immune function. Even plants like to sleep, and some like Biblis only digest prey at night. As a safety tip, make sure you drape your cords and have a low spot to prevent water-related electrical fires. If you are growing your plants outside or on a window, use the species-specific lighting preference later in this video as a guide to how much exposure the plant should receive. I grow Pingwicula in a medium that consists of one part silica sand, one part perlite, and one part vermiculite. You can find these at most big box stores, and they make a very awesome and fast draining soil for Pingwicula. Next up, water. First thing you need is a TDS meter like this. It'll measure the total dissolved solids in your water. You need water with under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids for carnivorous plants. Here you can see my tap water comes in at around 100 parts per million. Next, my reverse osmosis filtered water clocks in at 12 parts per million. To water, I use the tray method, watering from the bottom of the pot. I fill these trays one to two inches up the pot and refill the trays once the tray is dry, but before the medium dries. For a quick overview, make sure to have a TDS meter and only use water under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids. Tap water is usually unusable, so make sure to test it before use. Distilled water from a grocery store, pharmacy, or other store will work. Nursery water will also work. Water from an air conditioner or dehumidifier can be used, but is not recommended for the long term. Use the tray method of watering. Make sure the water is at least one inch from the bottom of the pot. If the soil dries, the plant dies. Top water all plants except Pingwicula and some small rosetta Drosera every two months to prevent mineral buildup, promote oxygen exchange, and prevent most fungal growth. 
Lastly, to fertilize or feed carnivorous plants, I use Maxi 161616 fertilizer and apply it as a foliar feed. You can mix a small amount with water and use an eyedropper or pipette, but I prefer to use a mixing bottle. I'll take small amounts on a plant tag and shake vigorously to mix. To be accurate, the mixture clocks in around 100 parts per million. I mist the plant's foliage thoroughly for about 30 minutes before lights go off every two weeks. Make sure to spray at an angle perpendicular to the pot to prevent excess fertilizer. This can cause algae growth that can be easily scraped away. Utricularia can be fed by spraying the topsoil, but back off if you see algae mats forming. Pingwicula gigantea which the specimens in this picture are not living up to, but this species gets incredibly large for a ping and is very stunning. It's relatively easy as far as pings go, though I don't recommend this as a starter ping. It's definitely a level up from that, but still pretty easy to grow. The issue is that if you don't have watering down for and how pings you know, typically like their water. Gigantia, as it gets larger, has a tendency to crash very quickly if there's inconsistent watering. But in its smaller size, like you see here, treat just like a normal ping, and it's just as resilient as ever. I, like I said, recommend this if you have experience with pings, and definitely check this species out. <laughs> To clone Pinwicula, you want to just take a leaf, preferably one lower down, and pull straight out. As you can see here on this first one, my hand kind of slips and I end up tearing it a little bit. That's okay. The white bit on the very end closest to where it was in the center is what we're looking for. And you can go ahead and get two. I like to use these little condiment cups. You can find them at most grocery stores, and they're typically pretty cheap. Go ahead, put a lid, make sure you uh, mark it. In the, about a month, you'll see little plantlets form at the end, and you can go ahead and remove them out. Place them on top of soil, just like you would a mother plant, and they'll just start growing nice and happy for you. It's a pretty quick and simple process. Thank you for watching this far. I have links in the description to other great reference videos done by other nursery owners for the International Carnivorous Plant Society. These include a pesticide discussion from Damon of California Carnivores and a lighting presentation from Drew of Carnivoro. There's also a link to Barry Rice's Carnivorous Plant FAQ, which has been invaluable to my own learning. Once again, if you want to try growing carnivorous plants or expand your collection, check out my website. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more carnivorous plant content. I wish you happy growing and great success. Thanks again.